you do. <laughs> okay. Uh, Yanni, will you be okay if we proceed in English? 100% is just when I reply, my English is not up to standard. So <laughs> if you, you, you excuse will hear my, how many Afri yeah. Yeah, you will my hear grammar. How many we, we check in there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah my, my grammar is not uh, 100%. Yeah. But yeah, no. you can speak English. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, uh, Tommy and Yanni, do you have any questions? Are there specific things that you want to talk about? Um, because in general, I can tell you, but you've read through the information, so I think you have the background of that. Is there anything that you guys would, would want us to talk about tonight? Please, yes. Uh, from my side, I don't really uh, uh, prepare myself for a, a lot of questions tonight. I, I was actually, uh, I wasn't sure what to expect uh, with this uh, uh, meeting that we have tonight. So I think uh, uh, you, with your uh, experience and knowledge around the business, maybe uh, or organization, you can maybe fill us in. And I think uh, as we go along, if questions arise from the, you know, then I will ask questions. Super. So I, I want to ask you, Yanni, if I talk about something and you know about it, just show me a thumbs up, meaning we don't have to go over it again. Then I'll move 100%. on to something else. Tommy, is there anything you want us to talk about tonight? Um, yeah, just in general, um, you know, the general approach. Um, is this, uh, <laughs> I'm just not sure about the system or, you know, is it going to be more of a systematic approach where whether it's water, whether it's electricity, whether it's housing, you know, um, like those th those three things as, as examples, you know, is there yeah. going to be a national plan uh, for things like that? Because, um, you know, I'm just thinking in terms of where well, you have so many different communities and everybody has ideas and everybody wants to do different projects. Um, you know, I just see a lot of clashing and um, a lot of people that will maybe draw up plans or have high hopes, you know, expecting a project um, or approval of a project. And, um, you know, and then there might be a clash, for instance, or a few clashes or, or broken hopes where people have not drawn up plans and they, uh, they've spread the word about the project, but then it clashes because everybody wants to do similar projects. And and so I'm just thinking, you know, if it's a national rollout of, of, of a project, whether it's like, like I say, water or electricity, for instance. So uh, the smaller communities will then know, um, will know the limitations, in other words. So then there's less of a clash and less of broken hopes. And, and that's the thing I'm most scared of. Okay, that's a good thing that you're asking that because uh, they will not be broken up. Uh, what we do on national level is really to undergird, to help to widen the spectrum of what people can choose from. So we do not have a national plan and we will never have a national plan. What we are doing is we, we've put out a structure of what is needed. We did a needs assessment for South Africa. And uh, let, me, let me begin with this. I think the most important thing that we have to get in order in South Africa is electricity, because that can take a very short period of time to put us on the right track of going somewhere. Okay, that's the first thing. Then we also need housing, we need agriculture, we need education, health, transport, Tandi, Hopi, sanitation, uh, recycling, uh, that's the eight major ones that we've started off with. We're busy on, pro on re reports on all of them. So let me explain to you what a report is and why we are doing it on national level is that everybody in the country is welcome to join in and to help with it. It's not somebody's report. We're actually compiling all the information together and everybody wants to say something can say whatever they want to. After we did the uh, energy report, we actually opened the floor for, for national and people nationally could speak about it and vote about it and say, yes, we want to send it into the Hall of Records. Yes, we want to change our electricity. So uh, let me just take the electricity as an example to show you what I'm talking about nationally. 
So what we have at the moment is basically one company, one uh, centralized um, organization that sends energy all across South Africa. And what we propose is decentralizing it, keeping ESCOM, because we really need that for our infrastructure and for load base. But get the communities to choose from what we have currently is 16 different ways of how you can bring energy into your community. So a community who's interested in that can just ask us, we'll open the Workflowy, which is a, a, a database with some information on, on all of these subjects. Uh, we're working on it. It's, it's uh, early days yet, but there's a lot of uh, information on energy. So if you want to uh, go in there and have a look what it is, you're more than welcome to contact me and I'll open it for you. So what happens then is if you go there, you can see that 16 different ways that you can bring a plant or whatever into your community and your community will then service the plant, put your own people there to work there, sell the electricity to, to your community and take it from there. This will be a project, a community project that will be funded by the asset fund, but belonging to the community. Yeah, you understand what I say? So say for instance, um, we look at, uh, uh, I, I just want to tell you that solar and wind, we do not recommend that. We would actually like it if people do not use those two because of the eco harshness that it has on our country and across the world. And also the durability, the sustainability of it is not good and it's very costly. But if a community decides they want to put up wind turbines, they are welcome. You sovereign beings, you can decide. So how it will work is if you look at different things for high yarn, oh, he's yes. not, yes. okay. So if... Is it somebody you know, Yanni? No, no, no. I just heard my name. <laughs> sorry. Oh, okay, Yanni. Yanni. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. It's another Yan. It's a Tommy, a Yan, and a Yanni. <laughs> yes. Sorry. So what, what we do is we compile all these uh, solutions for housing, for eco-friendly houses, for cleaning up water, for doing recycling, and we put it together on a database. That's what we are working on nationally, but it's not I, I want you to understand we are not like the leaders, like the, the head of uh, communities in South Africa, and we have the right. We don't. We are on exactly the same level as everyone in South Africa, whether they're three years old or 300 years old, old, rich, whoever they are. We are sovereign people. That means everybody can come along and say, I don't like that, or uh, I disagree with that, or I want that and come and add on. So when we open this to communities and they look at these 16 things and they say, but we've got a 17th one, then we ask them, add it there so that other communities can also have a look at it. So you are welcome to choose whatever you want to do. There's no restriction on what you do. What we found with a lot of people is they say, we don't know where, where to get started. You know, they, they, they want to do something, they need energy for argument's sake, but they don't know where to get started. So um, th that is the only thing that we do on national level, Tommy. So let's quickly look at transport. If, for instance, nationally, we want to put in a high-speed uh, rail a train going through South Africa or all over, servicing South Africa, every town, every village, every city that that high-speed rail will pass through or pass by, they will, will vote on that part that passes by their community. That community will be responsible for that part of it. But we will put out a, a national plan, like for instance, two or three, or how many different ways that we can do it. Uh, and then people will vote on it, say, no, we don't like it, or yes, we want it. That just means preliminary, we can put the plans out. Now every community will come up and say, this is what we want, or it's too close to our homes or it's not close enough or whatever whatever so everybody in south africa will have a vote and we on national level have one vote just one vote just like everybody else so uh, it, it, does that explain it to you tommy we, we're not a bunch of people sitting here that will dictate or will do anything for you if you yeah, really no. need sorry okay yeah no it's just a matter of of, of um you know, completely understanding the, the way forward or the system or, you know, a systematic approach. So, you know, when it comes to integration, like where do a community fit into the system? Um, I don't know if system is an okay word to use, 
but ultimately it's you know it is a system or a combination of different systems yeah, I, I, so, would, I would rather... So just, uh, you know, the more communities understand where, what they can do and what they, uh, maybe where the limitations are. So, I mean, you, you mentioned our voting process in a community. So let's just say there's, there's projects of, that's, that's made available for the community, whether it's power or water or housing. So, so maybe there will be a voting process in the community for... For maybe for what method they want to um, apply, you know, in, uh, whether it's now housing. Um, so that that's one part of it. Then there's another part, I suppose, where um, they might be they might, might either be contractors or would be contractors, or um, you know, uh, a project taken on uh, by the community as a, a community project. Yeah. So uh, you know how all this then fits fits into or how they integrated that into the system. Yes, Dominic, I think, let me explain to you the structure of South Africa, uh, what structure we have, because Kim has put out a structure of, you know, where we're going to go and how we're going to do it worldwide. And that's our structure. We just put a little bit more in there that would work for South Africa. So uh, let me explain that to you. So you know that currently the, the, the power of South Africa, um, according to our, um, what do you call it, the, the constitution, uh, says that the power of the people, uh, of the, the power of the country lies in the, in the communities. Uh, let me use another word for communities. They call it municipalities. The municipality is actually just the service uh, pillar for a community. It's not the community. But all the power was vested in a community, for a community, in a municipality. Now, it was changed during the reign of, of the government in South Africa. And they actually made us powerless because we vote. But they decide who they put in that position. And then we, we have no say about it. Now, we want to change that. And this is, this is the restoration plan is that a community, which is a group of people living in the same geographical area, they come together and they decide about something. So for argument's sake, uh, I live in Montana and Pretoria. So if in Montana the street lights are not working, I will be able to know Dirk or Amos or Gerda or Pietras or whoever is working with it because we will have an app that tells us exactly who's busy with what and who's employed in which positions. Those people are employees of the community and if they don't do their job you go through the normal thing that you know you give them more training etc and if they don't want to do it or cannot do it we need to replace them not meaning we throw them out and ostracize them because there's lots of things that we have in place to help people because we really need to restore but we cannot afford any longer to have people in positions that cannot do work and we keep on struggling because of that so that's one of the things. So in a community, your sovereignty will come to light in the sense that um, there will be software where on that software you can vote, you can uh, see what's happening in your community, whatever you want to know, you'll you have transparency to every department what happens. I'm not talking about tomorrow now, I'm talking we have to grow into this, so it will take some time. So I'm, 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 I want to tell you where we are going, not where we are already, because we're not there at all. So we will have software that everybody can know what's happening. So if for argument's sake, you can do sewing, you will put it on there. There will be a, 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 a heading there where people can go and look who can do some sewing for me in the area. Or if you are good at IT, you can put your information on there. If you need somebody for IT, you can put it on there. If you uh, grow tomatoes and you want to sell them, you can put it on the app. And whoever wants to buy it can buy it on the app. And you will know immediately who has it because you take a picture, it's there. You know exactly how they will come and pick it up, et cetera. And everybody will know your tomatoes are sold because they won't be on the app anymore. So there's, there's lots of things on that. Well, I call it an app. It's not going to be an app. It's actually better than an app. But it will be used in communities for them to communicate. For argument's sake, if you walk out your house and the street lights not not burning or you see a water pipe is burst, you will take a photo and it will be linked to the department that has to fix that. So immediately the photo will go there with the GPS, the, the, you know, the coordinates of where it is wrong. And you can follow on. You can click it and tell, tell it to tell you when they do anything on, on that. 
So you will be able to follow along to know, have they fixed it? Or is it just lying somewhere and it's not been fixed? And the community has the responsibility to make sure that these things come in place. Once it's well oiled and everything is in place, we, we needn't be so on it. But in the beginning, we will have to bring the disciplines in to make sure that the work is done. Okay, that's that's on community level. Now, when we talk about a community, where we start now, people are not coming together. You've got little groups who, be, who believe in good food. Then you've got little groups who just want to go to church. You've got groups that are worried about our children. There's, there's groups in every community. But once you start bringing a community together, you're really bringing them into unity for restoration. That's the word community comes from come into unity. Now, we don't want people to be in unity with everything. If you believe that the sky is yellow and it's got blue lines, everybody doesn't need to believe that. If you want to believe that, that's fine. But there are certain things that we do not budge from. Now, a little earlier, I used the word sovereignty, um, um, crystalline time and natural law. And those things bring us into a place where we cannot budge from restoring the, the, the world, that soil, water, air, food, people. So if you look at that, we have to clean up, uh, clean out all the poisons, all the wrong le learning that they gave us about health, for e instance. Because if we start eating good food, we have good soil, our water is clean. It, it's already a major step in the right direction. So whether you're a Muslim or a Buddhist or a Christian or a nothing, not in a belief, that's fine. As long as these things that we want to restore are put in place and that you care about people, you care about the, the world, you want the planet to, to be healed and restored. So within that, what we do is we, we ask people that, say, for instance, you're a, you're a teacher, you've got an idea, you want to build a, a school, or you want to start an after, after um, school, after the care of, after care school, uh, after school. Uh, you will then speak to people that you know that are interested in it. And three or four or five, 20, 200 people, whoever is interested, will come together and they will start talking about how can they fix it or what can they do. What do they want? What what do the, what does your community need to fix it? If you need a little after school care center in every block in Mitchell's Plain, and that is what you need in Mitchell's Plain, that's fine. If you have an area where people in a ten kilometers just have one, and all the children go there in the afternoon, and that's what they choose, that's fine. So every community will decide what's best for their community, and that would be the projects. So I'm going to take one step back. You know that it starts with needs assessments. So first you look at what is needed in your in your community and you start fill out, filling out that form. And when somebody else says to you, but you know, we have this problem, uh, this is not sorted, you put it on that list. So you keep on compiling on that list of what the needs are. Now, I assume that you did see the needs assessment basic form that we, we've put out as a, as, as a template. Okay, so if you look at the needs assessments, then you know that each of those needs needs at least one project. So if you need transport for the children after school, you need a, a, a project, but it could be three or four or five different people having different projects in different areas in your community. So everybody takes a few blocks or whatever, that's, that, that's okay. But you will only get to that when the people interested in transport in your area start talking to one another. So each one can do their own plan. If they come up with 20 plans for, for one community, those 20 people will need to sit down and talk and say, this is what I propose. And somebody else will say, wow, I didn't think of that. Okay, but add this because I've got this and you don't have that. So they will start talking and they will come up with a much better plan than if, if only one did it. Because we do not want the old system to just be duplicated. We actually really need to see what the needs is of the community and make sure that we, we follow up on that and bring the, the, the community something that can work for them. Once these, these people have come together and say, this is what we want for transport in Mitchell's Plain, that will be put out to the people to vote on it. And when the people say, that's a good plan, we like that, that means the buy-in is in that plan. Only then can you go really go further and apply for funding. So 
do you realize that after you've given this plan to the people, after you preliminary ask people, what do they think about it? Only then will you spend a lot more time to put more detail into your plan and to really get your plan up to date so that it could go in for funding. Does that make sense to you up to now? Yeah, yes, it does. Yes, it does. Okay. okay. Now, once you, the funding comes through, the funding will come from the repository to the project. But there are four uh, um, uh, checks and balances that's been built in to make sure that even if somebody who's never built something, who's never had a transport business, but that's their heart because if that's their dream, that's where, where we want to go because this whole thing is much more spiritual than natural. So if somebody wants to do that, but they do not have the knowledge, we want to put, um, uh, I almost want to say, uh, uh, help ways of helping them to really make a success. That's number one. But also to make sure that there's not wastage, that there's not unnecessary time wasted, that the community is served by the project. And these things that I'm talking about will happen in your community. It's not like somebody is going to look over your shoulder all the time. Although there will be a, a national making sure that we are responsible in our country, they will not dictate to you what to do. So once your project is um, accepted, you will know what the phases are, uh, the timelines, the, the cost, how much training you will need. Everything will be worked out with you. So I want to take one step back and just explain to you the structure that we want in South Africa. The first thing that we, we know in South Africa is that we, we need a lot of training. We need a lot of um, changing people's minds, opening them up to understand more. A lot of people didn't have opportunities. We want to give them the opportunities and make it baby steps and in stepping stones so that no one, no one will be left out. If you are 90 years old, you're blind and you're illiterate, you are welcome because we will accommodate it. If you are five years old, you've got a good plan for doing something as restoration, you are welcome. There's no limits in that sense. So what we're talking about is a knowledge bank. And a knowledge bank will be a place where all the, net, the, the information that people have uh, on whatever, they will come and deposit it there help or to help other people. So anybody, if you have a very good transport plan, uh, plan Tommy, and you put it on the on, on the uh, knowledge bank, then somebody in Sanin or somebody in Dwalbum or Brits or wherever, they go onto their uh, knowledge bank and they see, oh, Tommy's got a good plan here. I wonder if he thought of this. And people will start talking to one another and other communities will benefit by your note information that you have there. Now, say, for instance, they implement your plan, your plan in Brits, and they say, but they want you to come there for two or three weeks to help them. Then we want to make sure that you as a member of the Knowledge Bank, you as a person involved in it, can go to Brits and help those people, train them so that they can train their people and the other way around. You understand what I mean? So that's one of the things with the knowledge bank. The other thing is we want on the knowledge banks to have people there manning it so that if you want to do transport, but you're not too sure how you can prolong or do better on maintenance, you will put your problem to the knowledge bank and they will help you with research. They will never do your plan for you. They will never do your project for you. They're there to give you information. You know, basically now, if you go onto Google and you ask, Tell me about transport. It will give you like 300,000 different uh, information pieces. But you have to go through, you have to sift through them. We just want to make it more sifted, more uh, approachable for people, not to spend weeks and weeks reading things that's got nothing to do with you. So we want to put the information together so that you can do your project from there. Okay. On the knowledge bank, we do not only want the knowledge of what you can do, we also want to help you with supply chains. Where can you get the stuff? We also want to put on the knowledge bank what didn't work and why didn't it work for somebody. If you want to do a borehole and somebody's put up there, if you do use these pipes, this is what happened to me, you know, to, to line the borehole. It would be a good thing to have that knowledge. What playground he used it in, what was the pH of the ground, all that information. We want that on the knowledge bank. So if you look at it, you say, well, I don't have that same um, 
acid in the soil, so it's not a problem to me, or yeah, we have it too. So what is the better solution? That is the, the reason why we have the knowledge bank. Then once you have worked through your project, you've got it compiled, you've got it together, it will go to the um, project managers. And project managers is not a group of people who will sit in Joburg or Cape Town or somebody. It will actually be people in your community. Now, in your community, if you do not know, have somebody who really has good knowledge on milk farming, you know, on, on, on what do you call it? I almost said a milkery. What do you call it in English? Dairy. It's a, a dairy. Okay. If you do not have good knowledge on uh, what's the best way to preserve mon uh, uh, milk for argument's sake, and there's not somebody in your community who can help you. We will source you somebody, whether they come from Taiwan or Canada or wherever. That is the reason why we have these two structures, to actually bring all the help, but you stay in control of your project. Does that make sense to you, Tommy? Tommy, are you Sorry, there? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, does that make sense to you? Does yes. it help you at all? Yeah, no, it does, yes. Okay, so that's the structure. It's it's not really a system because <clears throat> if you have a good structure and people's hearts are in the right place, you're not like a, you know, in a, you have to do it this way. Every community can, in their own sovereignty, decide what they want to do. But they need to be supplied with information because there's a lot of info and a lot of technology out there that we don't know of. Uh, Kim, this week, I, I think it was this week, it was in the past two or three um, messages that she gave, she said again. So when you, oh no, sorry, it wasn't Kim, somebody said that Kim did say this. I think that's it. So if you give in a project, for argument's sake, you want to do transport and you say we're going to use minibuses, I'm just using an example. <laughs> Kim will come back to you and say, "This, this, the, your project is a good one. There is a number one. There is things that you can use that works on magnetic. There's the technology. There are also ways that you can use this. It, it runs on water. There's also this that you can use. It has wings. I'm just taking an example now. Now you can go back to the drawing board and say, guys, let's replace our minibuses with these things that's got wings because the cost because it's if better it, blah 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 whatever is the reason because there's a lot of technology that we don't know about but Kim does so she will give you the information on that te technology if you look at it you say uh-uh we want to stay with the minibuses you stay with the minibuses it's your choice okay yeah, I just want to say that what we're actually going to do in our community, we're going to create our own Google space uh, with everybody involved. And I think uh, the first thing is communication that is very important. First, we must go into the community and start creating that awareness among the people in the community and then uh, start to see how big that community is. Uh, and then once you have an idea how big your community is around you that you're going to work with, then you can start, like you say, uh, get information together, uh, you know, what knowledge do we have? What expertise do we have in that area? And start plotting it down, uh, maybe on a, a sheet or a Excel sheet, and get all that information. Then you then you know, okay. Uh, by doing that, you can start uh, see, okay. I've got sixty percent of the people is unskilled. I've got so many people semi-skilled, and so many professions I've got in this community. Then you, then you can start working with that, and then you can see if you start working with your project, uh, how in what level is your, in what areas basically are your focus is going to be, because if you sit with a sixty percent unskilled uh, community, then your project must make uh, a, a space to accommodate that people. <laughs> Uh, say, for instance, like you said, training, 
uh, how can you build in training into your uh, uh, program or or your uh, uh, project that you want to do to accommodate that people. And that will also, you know, uh, you will start uh, realize, okay, my, to, to handle 60% of the community or to get there, to get them trained, uh, I can't by myself, you know, train, say for instance, 2,000 people at one time. So now I need to break that down into smaller pieces where, whereby I can appoint certain people, say, okay, maybe I must break down my project into, say, five or six different plants, uh, smaller plants, like satellite plants, whereby I've got a structure in each plant that accommodate, you know, uh, uh, certain uh, training facilities for that people. And by doing that, as you grow, you know, then, then you, it will, like you said earlier on, then you will see, okay, this training process is working for us. Let's concentrate on this first, and that will be the next one, and that will be the next level. So I, I think for a start is, is, is to get awareness, get, get uh, an idea of your area, your community. And then when you start with your project, make sure whatever you do, uh, start it in such a way so it's manageable in the beginning. Uh, stability, I think, is most important of everything that we do. We don't want to fall around with uh, what we do. We want to do something that we can actually build on. And, and if I'm wrong, uh, please correct me on that. So... Uh, I don't want to uh, uh, put a wrong idea into the field, but that's how I see it. Don't start too big with your project. Rather build on what you have, but with smaller pieces coming together as a whole to fill a community. Um, uh, and that is basically how, what I wanted to say. You know, uh, uh, communi communication is very important. And I think uh, um, at this stage, many people in their, in their way of survival, it, the, the, the area of survival, they track it down to their own house and families, whereby people is not used to uh, get involved with big communities anymore or, or a big community to be involved because everybody got their own ideas. But I think once people see the benefits and see where we're going to. And, and that also is going to be a process. It's not going to uh, happen overnight. It's, gonna, uh, it, it's going, going to take a while to, to reach people and to, to get that mindset right. Because I think once the people mindset is right, then you can start uh, getting uh, results out of it. Uh, I'm very involved with... Uh, um, with, with the community here in, in uh, Amam Santauti as well. And what we see is that uh, the government uh, service is by, uh, if we look over the last couple of years, if, if we can put it on a graph, their service level is going down all the way. And communities' uh, involvement is going up. And we, we we call it the scissor graph. Uh, uh, and, and we want to get to a point where we actually uh, uh, reach a point where we uh, excel above their service level, where the communities start uh, taking over in a sense where they they getting control of what is happening in their area. So what I try to say is, is, is that it's very important to get awareness in your community and work with your community with a plan. Sit down and, 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 and decide, you know, around your specific project that you have, how you can approach the community in, in a way that you will manage it at the end of the day. Yanni, what, what you did and what you said is very valid. Um, I, I just want to add on to what you've just said. 
we are not going to try and get the community to all come together in one. Yeah. It's never going to work. Yeah. So what you will do is, I, I will use an example. Say, for instance, you decide you want to move your electricity to paralysis for the, for the I'm just going to use that as an example. So you yeah. get this plant, and it's a South African manufacturer. So um, within a few months, you will have the plant. And in that time, you can make people aware of it. We're getting a plant, we're getting a plant. So you'll have 10 people who stand together and say, yes, we want it. Not the whole community, because the whole community is not involved yet. So you put the plant down, and immediately you've got jobs for very unskilled people to do sorting, up to very highly skilled engineers. And those people go there and start working there. But you start with a a single plant. Yes. Okay, now they fit together like, uh, like Lego. So you, you have one module, and then you go bigger, and you put a, add a second module. Now people are aware of it, and now you can start all, uh, adding more and more and more. But now you've got stability because you've got energy, you've got gas, and you've got diesel that you can supply to your community. In that same time, you put up a, a tower, a communication tower in your community, and on, immediately all of them have Wi-Fi, and I'm they can make more. So they connect it. We now we either do not have data to to do it, or we do not have connectivity. You Correct. you've got yeah. you can phone, but there's just nobody on the other side of the line. It just doesn't go through, or it keeps on breaking down every two seconds. So yes. that's I'm I'm just talking about very basic things now that you do. Yeah. Now you move in and you say, okay, we're going to build houses. This is the structure within we're going to build houses. Who wants homes? So these people come, they apply for it, and now you start building. Say, for instance, the first 10 houses that you build, you buy a piece of land, you put out the 10 stands, and now you start building for 10 families who applied for it. They've been, that's 10 projects in that one. They're not building it themselves, but they're the project owner. So if you put something out like this, you say, Nobody of these 10 can move into their homes until all 10 houses are built. They will all move in on the same day. So they have to help one another to finish their their homes. That's the quickest that they can move into them. You have contractors doing the brickwork. You have everybody there. But these 10 have to work together. The old Magok or the Otaniki or the Wimpi uh, that normally just sat on the stoop, they will come and clean a window. The children will have help to uh, carry the garbage away, the, the rubble after they've built it, whatever. You help with whatever is needed. Mm-hmm. In that time that they built that house, community has formed between those 10. And now on the same uh-huh. day, you have a celebration and they move into their homes. Now, okay. everybody in the community will say, what happened there? We also want that. And that is how we see it will go. But now, for instance, say you build a house. You get very unskilled people. All they can do is pack bricks into a, 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 um, um, a wheelbarrow. That's all they can do. But they get a good pay for it. Now, in the next house that they build, he will be the guy with the wheelbarrow taking it to the people where they need it. And then somebody can, the next thing, he will learn how to lay bricks or how to mix mm-hmm. dug up or how mm-hmm. to give the bricks in the... So we will take it baby steps, but we do not want people to have papers because our country has been riddled with people yeah. going for studies and they have yeah. papers and it means nothing. It doesn't bring them money. It just made them poorer and it makes them feel terrible because they cannot... Uh, you know, when, when somebody just carries, uh, packs the bricks and he passes this, I built it. And that is what we want. Yeah. We Correct. want people yeah. to get involved. It doesn't matter who you are and on what level. So we will, it is baby steps, but it's not going to be here and there. We actually really want the community to start off with five, six, seven projects as much as they can handle because every project will have another group of people working in it. Mm-hmm. One of the things that we really need to look at is, is a skills development, you know, that you have somebody that they can go there and do the practical bricklaying and then go back and show where they're building the house, how they can lay the bricks and then they get graded and say, oh, I think you should go back for another three three days or three weeks or this is really not for you and it just help them to, to get going. Yes, Tandy? We are putting that into the schooling system. So with the schooling system, um, we're going to be using a common as blended learning system, a combination between the KINS system, which is a Russian system, 
where kids go to boarding school from the age of, uh, I think it's six, and then they have an accelerated period of learning of two years where they learn everything academic. Um, and they actually teach each other once they've learned something. And then they also have all their practical learning up until, I think it's around about age 13, 14. So they build their own classrooms, they build a new dormitory, they go and build one house per year for the community. So they've got all the practical skills and how to do everything in a house, including painting and plumbing and doing the gardening because they've got to prepare the meals for the school as well. So they've got a full rounded experience on how to maintain, manage, do, cook, preserve the food, um, clean, do the whole thing. So that's the kin system, but it's going to be blended with um, Montessori, a dash of Waldorf, um, and a, two or three other systems, but mainly a Montessori core. Um, so that we have, so we want to have that school. We also want to have schools that for areas where the children have dropped out from a very young age, and I'm um, trying to get a community on board at the moment where there's kids in grade two that have fallen out of school while well, they were suspended from school because of using drugs and theft and stabbings or whatever, but they must shouldn't fall through the cracks. They should be able to now go into a school where they can do something they would really like and where they don't feel stupid and where they get three meals a day and they are in a in a in a a, a gentle loving structure because so far what I've determined is that all these kids have got serious things happening at home. Um, and if they want to be day scholars, fine. If they don't, they can come to school every day. Um, and then there's generally an animal connection as well, because learning to work with animals at the same time, it touches the heart in quite a big way. Um, and it creates a, a different person in the end. So that's the type of schooling. So when these kids are going to be finished with school, they can literally build their own houses. They're not going to need um, help. Maybe their friends will come and help them, but not everything's about money. So that's the kind of system we're looking at going forward for education. Yeah. Uh, and that, is, that is definitely good to start at a very young age and bring them up to, to speed. By the time they're 20, they, they settled in a job. I think what Yanni was uh, uh, was referring to, and that's why I said we have to look at the Centers for Skills Development now mm -hmm. as for the grown-ups. A gentleman who's 43 years old and he's, he, he, he cannot earn enough money to take care of himself, never mind anybody else. Uh, people who are, are, are willing to learn or willing to work, we, we have to bring them to a level where they take responsibility and they're accountable for what they do. If they are unskilled and they do unskilled work, they are accountable for what they do. That is what we have to learn them. Uh, I teach them. It's not just how to do the bricklaying, but you cannot just go and mess it up and then walk away. It, it doesn't work that way. So there's a lot of learning to be done. And it will be from different levels that we, you know, we get to this. Yes. But um, at Tandy, going forward, we really, really need to start this as a, at a young age. You know, our children go to school, by the time they're 18, they've got to decide what they want to do with their lives. It's like they start all over again. In some of the, the countries, the people, the children by age six know in which direction they, they have to go. And then they start training in it. And then you can know, well, I don't like it, or yes, I want to do it. How many people go and study as a, a dentist or an attorney? And then they finish and say, ah, oh, this is not for me. Then they start studying all over again. So we, we have to help people earlier to really find where they can be. And you can only really do that if you do practical work. Have you got load shedding, Dundee? No, um, it's gotten um, very uh, much darker outside. So I have oh. my little light on next to me to actually have light on my okay, face. No, that, that's super. Just so I'm going into load shedding in a few minutes. Um, but guys, so so there's lots of things that can help with a lot of things. Tommy, I don't know if we answered your questions. Um, did we? Do you have more questions? Uh, <laughs> no, thanks. You, you did help us. You, you have helped with um, some of the questions I had. Yeah. 
Uh, is there anything else that we can we can try and talk about or that you want to tell us about? <laughs> you know, um, I'm sure you can guess uh, more or less, you know, uh, with the area from from uh, knowing uh, knowing about the area I'm staying in. The Cape Flats is terrible at the moment. There's, there's, there's a, a huge lack of hope. Um, a lot of people are feeling hopeless and, and helpless. So, yeah, people need help. Um, a lot of people need a lot of help, you know, so psychological, financial. Um, uh, the youth, the, the youth are directionless. So, sure. <laughs> this and situation, The situation is dire, you know, across mm -hmm. the Cape Flats. Mm -hmm. And... Um, is this 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 uh, there's so many different things that that's uh, that's influencing um, the status of the people, you know, uh, the influx of the people from the Eastern Cape, the uh, uh, companies that's downsizing, uh, our issue with power, um, energy. So um, yeah. I was I was actually hoping. For, uh, bottom line is I was hoping for for a miracle, you know, where uh, we the energy would change in such a way, you know. Um, I'm follow uh, Kim diligently. Um, yeah. So basically, yeah, uh, you know, where the whole whole of humanity is just lift, lifted up a, a couple of uh, levels, you know, from where we are at the moment. Because, like, you know, like with projects, no, nothing wrong, you know, and uh, it definitely would bring some hope in, in, a, in a small way and in small steps. But, um, yeah, the whole of humanity just needs to be lifted up spiritually. We, we really and, need um, that throughout all the communities. Yeah, you know, you know, and, um, yeah, mm -hmm. if, <laughs> I was hoping there would be some type uh, this is just wishful thinking. This is just, by the way, you know. This is just, no, you should keep on wishing. This is just from a point of where I, where I am right now, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, yeah, some type of abundance. Uh, we, uh, because we're not at we're not at, at at point zero. We're at point minus seventy eight or something, you know, in terms of energy, uh, mm -hmm. spirituality, energy. I myself have, uh, you know, I'm struggling to. Uh, not to lose hope, basically. Uh, uh, you know, if you, I mean, you just open the papers, you open up Facebook. It's it's just it's besides, uh, you know, theft. There's just so many murders and and killing of 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 teenagers and innocent people, and and it's 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 happening so frequently. Uh, but you know, but but the last uh, news, what's name from Kim? You know, hopefully. Yeah, there will be changes in the energy, in the, in the atmosphere, the way people, in the way people feel and and and, and act uh, in the near future. I'm, I'm just hoping for things to start changing for you know positively, because sure, people are battling. You know, people are working. And I've mentioned this before. People that's working don't have money the day after they get paid. You know, that's that's how. Mm -hmm. Much in a in a minus in a deficit we are, and um, yeah, I just hope something. I'm just hoping for a miracle. Bottom line, you know. Um, you yeah, the that's, miracle is that's the miracle. That's yeah. the miracle. That's the miracle that we keep on waiting for it. Tommy, um, I would really love to talk to you tomorrow and 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 just share some things with you uh, about where we're going. But what I want to just share with with uh, uh, we now on this group now. Can you imagine if there are 10 houses built in Mitchell's Plain? Because people walk past there and they say, who's paying for this? They say the asset fund, anybody can have it. What do you think will happen in Mitchell's Plain? Do people need homes in Mitchell's Plain? Yeah. Uh, do they? Sure. Like okay. I say, now, you know. Now, now, I, I want, I want to, well, I'm saying that. I'm, I'm just using one example. This could be anything. Yeah. But say, yeah. for instance, you start building homes. Who's going to do the building? The people from Mitchell's Plain. So people will get jobs. Where are they going to buy the stuff from? From people there. 
who will be the suppliers that will put up brickworks and put up uh, factories that supply them with wood and whatever. And the help will be there for them to put it up and to have a good income. And all of those people will need to employ people in Mitchell's Plain, not people from Joburg and Kimberley and Messina. People from Mitchell's Plain will get jobs. With that, there will be lots of training and lots of help because the assurance card will be out. So all your health will be covered. The essentials card will be out. You will not go to bed hungry. It will really pick up the whole thing. Now, I've been following this for a very, very long time. And I can tell you, we're very, very, very close to it popping. We are very, very close. Uh, this is not months away anymore. It's not. But you know, you know what? When the money comes through, we are not ready. We do not have plans. And, and I wrote a letter this week and, and explained that in South Africa, people are so downtrodden. And so they don't want to make these plans because they've been um, disillusioned so many times. They, they do not have the energy to put it into the plans. But even if they do, they, they can't see that it's going anywhere. So don't worry about that because it will be like lighting a fire. You know, you don't have to direct a fire. It just runs. This will be lighting a fire. If one person starts with one thing in your area or close to your area and people see it, I am always amazed at how people who do not have cell phones, do not have TVs, within two days, they know everything that's happened because people talk to one another and people spread the word. This will, will happen quickly and people will will at first be jealous because they will think somebody is, has got an uncle or somebody who gave their money. And then the uh, the word will spread, but it's our money. It's it's ours. Our provision comes from God and God is taking care of us. And then people will start working on it. And and it will take time. It's not going to happen overnight. But if you say, you said that you, you hope that there will be a, a change like a burst of energy, you know, it's a very gradual thing. We do not realize. Um, I, I sat back and I looked at what, and, and I looked at specific things. If you go and look what was on the social media and how your friends and your family spoke three years ago, they didn't have hope. Now people's circumstances are much worse, but the frequencies over the country is, is lighter, over globally is lighter. And because the frequencies is lighter, People say, but I'm at the end of it and I can't pay things, but they just keep on going. No, oh, that's true, yeah. Okay. She'll be back. Anyway. Just walk Just walk It's a bad thing about load shedding. It's a yeah. Oh, and hers goes off and mine comes back on. <laughs> yeah, I think I was also going to go off now. Yeah. I, yeah. Sadiq, listen, just write those plans down. Have you got something yet? <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, I must put it down on paper, yeah. I'll, I'll sh you know what I'm yeah. doing? I'm taking like a typist um, piece of paper. You know, like a blank piece of paper with outlines on. And in the middle, I make a block and I put the title of it. And every idea that I have relating that, I make like a line off. Branch. Wait, let me quickly just get it here and I'll try and put it up here. And even though it's going to be a bit skew in the card, I think you guys will get the idea. Let's see if I can actually do this. Oh, wait, maybe not. I will attach it quickly. No, I can't. It's going to take too long. I will send it to you both, okay? It's what it's Thank called you. is a community food security. So you've got the title. Then I make a line off and I write, for instance, water. And then I write all the points regarding water for that community. If there's a water shortage, if boreholes, what water, 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 water. Then I go and make next strike and I go land. Where can it be done for that community for food security? And then I go, oh, there's an open plot. And I write it down. There's an open plot, corner of so-and-so, number so-and-so, that road. I write those things down, okay? Then I go, um, what are, for instance, why do I need seed? 
फन स्किस यस ये फ्लॉ वी स्टोर या इफ यू वांट Okay, now I can't log in because my my Wi-Fi is on electricity and I can't get in. I'm trying to, but I can't. Okay, all right. Uh, just say good night to everybody. I'll speak to him tomorrow and say goodbye to Yanni as well. Okay, okay. thank you. All right, <laughs> bye. Thank you so well. Bye. Bye, this. Okay, so then you like go seed, another line, seed, and you write down all things about seed. So you want the best quality seed you can find, heirloom and GMO free. Then you go, okay, but now you're two. I don't want to buy seed again. I'm going to make sure I have enough plants that I can actually save the, save the seed off those plants so I can plant next year. So you write those things down. Um, and then you, you go, but maybe I can ask the community also to sponsor seed, those that have good quality seed but never planted. Then with the land, for instance, you can say, okay, um, I can ask... Um, I put out there who's willing to actually help me grow so you can say to somebody in the on a plot um uh they've got a big garden but th there's nothing but just you know just bosses and it's it's not really a functional garden it, but they like to garden and they just haven't had the opportunity for various reasons and you make a plan you say, i will deliver compost i will help you set up the beds you'll get help but you've got to maintain it and then you bring the veggies in and we'll have like for instance a distribution center um where you maybe have a shop and a nursery and um you can for instance with the distribution have scooters delivering um to those elderly people that are living in a home or um you can have somebody with a bucky so this is everybody's locally involved and this local currency and exchange that thing will happen um so that's how you just keep going sadik that's how you start scribbling then you get all your things in place and you just keep writing more and more things down on each and every item even include, including your preservation of your food who's going to preserve it who's going to make the jam Who's going to make the the Fisneda boinkies and curry and put it into glass bottles? Um, who's going to do the flash free freezing of it if there's extra? Um, you can buy a flash frozen freezer and you can start flash freezing because you'll have electricity. Remember going forward, and if you don't have electricity, you go forward in faith and know that it's going to happen down the line. But you've got to go forward and manifest it in this way, and believe that it's going to happen. Um, So that's just what I did. I did a plan for community food security. And once I've got it all together and more orderly, I'll share it with everybody. And it's going to be on the national um, database for everybody to pull down and say, mm, I quite like that, but you know, I'll do this different and I'll do that different and I'll add this. She's forgotten about that. And that's like something we can all use kind of thing. That's the idea. Okay. I just yeah. want to say, uh, when it comes to, you know, three years ago, I wanted to start this recycling. And uh, I also didn't know where am I going to start with, uh, with this all. But what I want to say for everybody is just start with it. And, 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 and I learned through the three years that I'm busy with this now, is that when you start with it, it will unfold as you go along. Everything will unfold and, and, and you know, you will uh, uh, see, okay, but this, I didn't think about this and okay, I didn't think about this. And uh, so when you start, just start with, like you said, just start with a project, put it down on paper. And as you work with that project, you know, the it will start falling into place. And as it's falling into place, you will start uh, realize, okay, this is where my focus point is going to be. I'm going to focus more into this direction and I will add all that to my focus point. Uh, that is basically what I want to say. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. And Sadiq has also got into load shit. <laughs> so, um, Just expand on your plans, get it ready, and know that you're going to be very busy. 
<laughs> Thanks. We're all going to have so response. much fun yeah. with yeah. restoring the earth and providing food yeah. and making sure there's yeah. electricity and cleaning up yeah. and you name it. And nothing is too small. I mean, we can yeah. even um, we can make compost because everybody's going to be growing mm. food. Um, yeah. People are, we can, um, I mean, it, it's just, it's unbelievable the amount of lives we can touch and how many jobs will be created yeah. very fast. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I think while there was a lot, a lot of focus, uh, uh, shift in my focus after I met uh, uh, Erwin uh, a few weeks ago. Now, I didn't know about all this and uh, my focus change so i'm busy basically not rewriting my whole project but you know there's a lot of uh, different focus points that i want to add into my project to make it you know uh, more uh, not uh, i don't know what's the right word for it um, but beneficial for more more different people in the project if i can put it like that uh, so that there's a benefit program for each of them uh, because many times and, and i see it into business as well that your lower class people who's doing the most of the work is people who doesn't get the benefit uh, at the yeah. end of the day it's a it's a top structure that's taking all the benefit of, 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 of the, the financial benefit of it. And the people who's actually doing the work doesn't get that same uh, 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 privilege, privileges. I know you can't pay somebody who's, who's say, say for instance, used to get 2,000 rand. You can't all of a sudden pay him like 30,000 rand all of a sudden. In every direction, you must uh learn uh, get that people to understand and to grow into they must actually feel the progress and and have a vision and and to see where are they going to towards they must get that i that vision to to see that my my vision is not going to stop here at uh, say for instance five or six thousand rand, I can also get to a point where I earn like twenty or thirty thousand rand a month. But they they must be they must see what they need to do uh, to get there. And 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 I think uh, Eunice uh, explained it very uh, nicely in her example earlier on. You know, uh, with the bricks, uh, how to put the bricks into the barrow, and then you know, from there they learn to take it to the site, and then start mm -hmm. doing the mixing and stuff. And that's basically what need to happen. And uh, uh, if we can get the moral right of the people who's working with you, you get so much more done because now you sit with a lot of people with a positive energy, if, if there's positive energy among 20 people, you know, there's a lot of changes around them because they influence another 20 people around them with positive energy. And at the end of the day, you sit with a community that's positive. And then that is when you start getting things done the way you want it to be then I'd like you said, ideas will come forward and you will start working with that ideas because now you sit with people who want to be somewhere. They can see they can reach, reach that goal that they want uh, to achieve. It is possible. It's not a, a dead end street where they sit in. They, they basically, if they can do this, they can reach that. And uh, uh, yeah, that is, uh, I think it's important. Yeah, I'm thinking if we can um, encourage things like profit sharing. Yeah. If someone's been yeah. a, you know, start doing profit sharing. Um, not yeah. Even that is a lot to get your mind around because mm. we've all just had different experiences. But Correct. that's a good yeah. way of going about it because it means yeah. people will employees will feel responsible in the company that they work for. It's not their company Correct. that they profit sharing. Yeah. Correct, yeah. So if I we see all, their future yeah. in that, yeah.
if I'm good, you good. You good, I'm good. Yeah. Correct, yeah. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's one way. And yeah. also cooperatives of sort for different types of businesses. Yeah. And keeping yeah. the um keeping the money local as much as possible. Employing local is very Correct, important. Yeah. So we don't have people spending hours on the road. Um driving to various sites which is exhausting dangerous yeah. on the roads and they are not spending as much time with their families as they could Correct. and Correct. family yeah. and recreational time time to relax and unwind is what is very important as well and Correct. then in the yes. future if we if we do things right we can go down to a four week four day week in future hmm. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Because if everybody is productive, you get so much done. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is it only me and you, Tandy Michelle? That's it. Everybody else is, is load is shedding. It, oh. <laughs> oh, this load shedding is is bad. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, but it's it's. But uh, thanks for. Uh, taking the time out, uh, spending the time to explain everything to us. And uh, um, I'm actually very excited, you know, uh, working with you people. Um, and I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that, you know, uh, South Africa, South Africa's change will come. It's just to get the people to understand and to be, get them focused again. I think that is the biggest work. The exciting thing is that this is happening worldwide, simultaneously. Yeah. Yeah. So everybody's yeah. going to go. Can you imagine we're talking about energy? What Sadiq was talking yeah. about. Everybody in all the countries in the world going, oh, so and so is doing a project. They're making their dream come true for our community. Yeah. Everybody yeah. experiencing that. There's a project in my community on the news. It's, yeah, there's a project happening. Did you see that housing development? It's coming from a place called the Asset Fund. What the heck is that? <laughs> Let's find yeah. out. And then people yeah. doing stories about the project and the Asset Fund and what the heck is this? Oh, we've got to talk about yeah. it. Oh, no, I also want to do a project. Where do I send my project off? Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. And then and it we'll just be... off. And the whole world's going to go into this like major like shh, excitement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, once people are aware of where we're going, you know, like you said now, all of a sudden projects will pop up you never imagine. Uh, people maybe were sitting with that in their dreams and they don't want to share it because for them it's a dead-end street, you know. They mm -hmm. think, okay, I'm not going to do anything about it because it's anyway not going to come true. And all of a sudden they see, okay, but maybe this can come true and then there's another you know excitement coming out of it and then you yeah, know we can serve another part of the puzzle you know with that people involvement yeah yeah i think that um it's important that we keep our energy high focus on not using negative words using the positive the whole time um okay. our bodies do not understand the word not when you tell a child don't or sprint jump off that chair don't put that knife in your yeah. hand take don't carry the knife by the blade um yeah. they yeah do it that's yeah. why there's so yeah. many accidents and it's all things that were that we were programmed to do and say in our language, especially in the English language. Yeah. Um, so we've got to be careful how we speak and even listen to the Afrikaans. The double negatives is even worse. Yeah. Yeah, because if somebody asks you something, you're in Afrikaans, you know, you ask with a negative, no, I, no, I don't want, or, or so you ask a positive question, but you answer it negative. The first word you do is, is you answer it with a negative word. Yeah. 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 And this is why it's important to start working, even though you just practice on speaking to source to help you. We can communicate with animals. We can communicate yeah. with other people. 
no. focus on that no. as well because in future we can actually avoid that negative language by okay. just learning to communicate telepathically you know what it's like right. when you when um you think about someone and i want to call so and so oops there's my phone ringing and it's that person yeah yeah i'm with you yeah um thank you michelle i just want to ask you something uh, come to my mind now i'm busy with this project um i know the funds is not ready yet but um I'm busy, like I said earlier on, you know, basically swift my focus a little bit. Is it possible maybe for somebody to give me a little bit direction if I send maybe uh, when I'm ready, send my project, I've got it on internet, but there's a lot of changes that's coming now, to send it to somebody mm. and to tell me, listen, your too much focus in this direction, maybe add this or maybe add this or maybe look into that. So while I've got the time so so that I can yes. bring that kind of stuff into my project to when the time is ready, I already got it into my, uh, uh, into my project. Will that be possible? If I can maybe send it to somebody, you, I don't know if... Some of you will be interested in no, seeing not, that. No, not yeah. us, but um, but there is somebody in our international team that can look over it for you. As that, yeah. yeah. Just to get a little bit of a guidance, you know, to to tell me, okay, your project is too much focused, say, around recycling itself. We want you to con uh, break it down into three other categories like housing and, you know, uh, uh, the low class skill development program that need to be write, written into the uh, and, and maybe transport like you see I'm just adding stuff now uh, to tell me and then I can maybe look into that write it into my program so when we're ready we can submit it yeah um, Love it. I will get you the email address okay okay 100%. and then you just send it off Okay. okay, but do it soon because, um, yeah, try and do it sooner rather than later because they're getting very busy. And once the funding starts flowing, they're not going to have time. Okay, 100%. Thank okay. you, Tandy. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Yeah, thanks for the time. Enjoy it's your only evening. a pleasure. Um, we can do this again, um, but talk to some strangers and tell some strangers also that there's, they can do projects. Okay. okay? Okay, I will. Enjoy okay. your evening and thanks for your time, Tony Michelle. It's a pleasure. Take care. Okay. You too. Bye. Thank you. Bye.